I'm Tony, and today we're going to be working on block number six of the pixelated Halloween quilt along. I'm so excited for this block. It is the black flame candle. Now, of course, if you want to change the colors and things, feel free. Uh, but we thought a, a nice black flame candle was super Halloween-y. Uh, and it's an easy block. It goes together pretty fast. So let's get started and, and make a candle. Just like with the other blocks of the quilt along, we want to take a look at the instructions. Uh, so if you're making this block as a standalone and not part of the pixelated Halloween quilt along, that's what we're doing. Uh, oh, no, no, ignore that. Sorry, that's not what we're doing. We're doing the next one. If it's being made as part of the quilt along, use the following strips from previous blocks and do not cut additional strips. Okay, so we're pulling a black two and a half inch strip. Let's make sure that I've got the black, okay, two and a half inch strips. Here it is. Okay, so there's black. I'm going to make sure there's no other black in here. No. Okay, so I've got that. Uh, brown. Okay, so we want the brown. Brown is all the way at the bottom. Okay, so here is our brown and there's more down here to make sure I get it all okay then we've got that so we've got black we've got brown the dark gray now I had to look at it because I'm like oh yeah great I grabbed the light gray I'm like no no Tony no 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 that is light gray you want the dark gray okay um, one dark gray. So we have to cut four. So I'm going to change this to three that we now have to cut. Okay. Um, we've got that one. Light yellow. Okay. So here is the light yellow. Okay. So that is a zero. Okay. We've got that. Now the brown dark gray combined strip. Okay. So we're pulling out this. The brown and light gray combined strip, not the brown and the black, the brown and the dark gray. Perfect. Okay, so I've got that. Okay, so I'm going to take the rest of these and I'm going to set these aside. And so because we're not cutting one of the um, brown and dark gray, so we're taking off one of the browns for the one and a half inch strip and one of the dark grays. All right, so let's finish cutting everything else. Um, oh, we haven't done any white and black yet? Ooh, we have not. This is our first, I can't believe this is our first white and black combo. All right, so let's take a look at the rest of them. Now the white, we've got that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut the remaining strips um, that are in here. Uh, after I cut those remaining strips, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the solid pieces. So the um, the two and a half by fourteen and a half, the two and a half, two and a half by four and a half, two and a half by two and a half, and then the two and a half by one and a half inch pieces. Uh, and then I will come back and we will pull all of the strips that we need for all of the combined pieces to then cut. Um, now, if you are like, Tony, I need to see exactly how you're doing and what you're doing, take a look at block number one that we have here for the quilt along. Um, just type in pixelated Halloween quilt along block number one in the search bar at the top and it'll pop right up and all of the step by step by step cutting instructions can be found in there. But we're going to fast forward to save a little time for everyone else. So let's move on to the strips. All right, so we're going to take the strips. Now remember, using the strips, we're going to sew the right sides together for each side of the following combinations. Now we already have the combination of the brown dark gray. So I'm going to move it over from this page over to here and brown dark gray. I'm going to mark that off right there. All right, now in this case, we need 
a, let me get my scissors, half white strip to half black strip. So I'm cutting the strip in half this way. Now with the white, if you're using the, um, the Northcott Toscana fabric, it's hard to tell which side is right. So I always flip it to make sure that the right side is always facing up for these. And then that way it's easy to tell whenever I'm doing it. So there's a half white. So let's go ahead and take the black and do that. and half black. Okay, next one is the black to dark gray. All right, so here's a dark gray strip and a black strip, a half brown to half light yellow. Okay, so we're gonna take, cut this in half and half brown to half yellow. Okay. And dark gray to light yellow. So it's a half. So half dark gray to yellow. I was like, not the brown to yellow. There we are. So left over, you should have a half gray, a half white, a half black, and a half brown that I'm going to set aside with the rest of the solid pieces to be used in future blocks. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and sew all of these together, right side to right side using stripping. Uh, and then I'm going to come back and iron them and then we'll cut the pieces out of these. We have all of our pieces now cut out, so let's get this organized. All right, how I'm gonna do it is I actually take a sheet of paper and I go row by row by row. And in fact, I'm gonna start with this bottom row and we're gonna go do row nine first. So I'm gonna do row nine right there. And what I always do is I take all of my pieces and I set them up in a way to make them easy to grab so that I can easily see them over here. So as you can see, we've got that. And I'm going to put those up there and there and there off camera. You can't see them, but they are there. Trust me. And then here, oops, there we go. And then here, you know what? Let's put these over here. Okay. So we've got all those pieces. So we're going to start with row number nine. Now, remember these arrows show us which way that the air, which way those seams are going to go. So if we're starting at the bottom, we've got this piece right here, and then we've got our brown and our gray combined strips, four of these. Um, we, now, we have to make sure as we're laying them out that our pieces are going in opposite directions. What I mean is, here is the, uh, our seam. Our seam in this one is going towards the brown. So the next one, we need to have our seam go towards the gray and then brown, and then gray, and then brown for one of the smaller ones, and then a single gray piece, and then this one. Now, whenever we then are pinning this, we wanna make sure that we're still following the direction that the arrows are going. So the arrow is going to the right. So that means I'm gonna pick up this right piece, flip it over that left piece, and then pin it into place. What this does is it allows me to go from pinning to the sewing machine to the ironing board all in one movement without having to check this because I'll take, I'll sew it and then I'll take it to the ironing board and I'll iron it like that. And then our seam is going to go that way, which is the way that we want it to go. Now, whenever you're laying these pieces out, if you have any pieces like this that you need to go either this way or this way, check your seam. Make sure your seam is being pointed in the correct direction. Um, if your seam needs to go to the right, so example for this one, if the seam needs to go to the right, it would do that. 
if the seam's going to the left, it needs to do that. So make sure that you pick up the appropriate pieces, uh, or if you don't have any appropriate pieces, just re-iron it. Re-ironing it is, is really easy. Just, just re-iron it. It's not a problem. There's no reason why you just can't re-iron it. Um, and that's it. Now, in this case, oh, nope, I don't. Uh, if you have an extra piece that doesn't have a buddy, so if you have a single lonely piece, it's perfectly okay. In the next pass, we'll make sure that we include those lonely pieces. So I'll show you that when we get there. All right, so at this point, I'm going to finish laying all of the other rows out, um, and then we'll move to the sewing machine where I will show you how we're going to do some basic sewing on them. Um, and yeah, and then we'll come back after uh, I finish pinning everything. As I was laying the pieces out, I forgot to check that we have a horizontal piece. We do. So right here in row number four, we have a horizontal piece. Now, normally uh, you can check to make sure that, oh yeah, nope, it's right there on page number three. That yes, no, we've got that horizontal piece. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sew this now though. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to flip this up. I'm going to sew this together and then that way it's easy for me to go ahead and pin and sew all the rows. So you're going to go ahead and see me sew this, iron this, and then I'll put it back in and continue on uh, laying out and pinning the rest of the rows. All right, let's get sewing. All right, whenever we sew these, we wanna make sure we sew them as a scant quarter inch. Really quickly, that means that it's not quite touching this piece of metal. I use a quarter inch piecing foot with guide, so I know when I'm doing a quarter inch seam. If you wanna learn more about scant quarter inches, uh, I have a video down below that explains them. All right, so we always want to chain piece. Again, if you wanna learn about chain piecing, I've got a video, it's down below. Uh, so we wanna go ahead and just put them right in in order to sew these pieces. So let's get these in town, let's get that. And then we wanna bring this over in order to do the next one. All right, and we're gonna free this one. Let's go ahead and separate these chained pieces. So we've got there, there, okay. And then after we separate them, I'm just removing the pins. Don't sew over your pins. It is a horrible habit. It's a habit that I've developed. Um, but then you notice how I'm keeping them all flat exactly like they are. So that after I finish sewing all these, I'm gonna take these, put them directly onto the ironing board and just lay them out just like this and then iron them straight up so that the seams go in the direction that I want. I forgot to mention, whenever we finish pinning, uh, you are gonna have these two pieces left over. Totally okay, just set them aside, not a problem. All right, so remember, uh, starting from row number nine, I said that we were going to just lay these out exactly like they are on the mat, and then iron them straight up. So you notice how I iron the, I, I the seam first before actually ironing it straight up? That it locks the seam in and it actually helps to make sure that it doesn't warp whenever you're ironing this up. So it really locks that seam in and it prevents a lot of the stretching. So, so that's important. You definitely, definitely want to do that. Okay, so after we do that, I'm just gonna take these and set them aside 
and then grab the next ones. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to iron all of these pieces. Uh, after I finish ironing them, I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you uh, how to pin the second pass through. Uh, and, and we'll take a look at that. Normally through the second pass, I would go through and I would find one that has an odd number to show you that we leave that first piece out and then pin the rest. Unfortunately, every single one of these rows has a nice pretty even number, which I think is super funny. Um, except for the last row, so row number one. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what to do for your last pass. Because what I'm going to be doing is pinning all of these. I'm going to be sewing them, ironing them, coming back, and then they're ready for the last pass. So normally about then I would show you, but I'm just going to show you right now. Because this one's got three pieces. So I'm going to lay this out just like the pieces go. And imagine this is the last pass. Well then, with three pieces, I am going to pin both sides. So if it's the last pass for it and you want to save some time, you want to save some energy, just do it on the one side, flip it open, and then pin the other side. And then you can actually, when you're going to sew it, sew both sides. Um, so you sew the one side, sew another piece, and then sew the other side. And it's, that's it. It is simple as that. So I'm going to go ahead and lay out all of my pieces, um, get everything pinned, sewn, ironed, uh, laid out, pinned, sewed, and ironed again. And then we'll come back and I'll show you how to combine all the rows together. We're at that point already. All right, so now let's sew our rows together. So I'm going to show you the last two, rows nine and rows eight, of how to do it. What you want to do is take your bottom row, flip it up on row number eight, and we're going to find the first place where we have two seams that are connecting. So in this case, it's right here. I'm going to make sure that I get that in there. I'm going to nest that seam, make sure that those seams are butted right up against each other and then pin that into place. And then I'm gonna find the next one and pin that. And let's see, let's move down. It's all the way down here. There we are, we've got that one and then that one. And then once we've got all of the seams pinned that are butted right up against each other, then I'm gonna go back and I'm going to put a pin in the rest of the seams. And what this does is it makes sure as I'm sewing, these seams are going to lie flat. They're not going to, you know, get bunched up. They're not going to flip as I'm sewing, which is important because you want to reduce the bulk in the ba in your backing. Uh, well, in the behind, in the, in the back of your top, um, you want to reduce the bulk as much as you can. Uh, and that's going to make it so much easier when you actually do the quilting. Now, just because you can't see the seam doesn't mean you shouldn't pin it. So I'm using my fingers to see where the seams are on the other side and then pinning those. And that's it. And then you want to sew these rows again with a scant quarter inch, uh, just like you are sewing the actual blocks themselves. Uh, and then after I finish pinning this, I'm going to go ahead and sew it iron it and I'm going to keep on going until we have our finished block and then we'll come back and I will do the uh, the big block reveal.
And that's our candle block. Oh, I love it so much. I love the grays that we picked for this quilt because they make the blacks pop so well, which is super hard with a nice dark gray. Um, the Toscana line from Northcott is just amazing and just super, oh, love this fabric. Uh, anyways, I hope that uh, you learned how to make a candle block today. Uh, don't forget to like my YouTube as well as my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, where I stream live. And I also stream live here on YouTube. Check my schedule out on Mondays. Uh, oh, and don't forget my Quite Nerdy Quilters Facebook group. We have a lot of fun in there. Um, share your stuff on Fridays for Share Fridays. Um, and yeah, let's, uh, I hope to see you around.